Welcome to this video in the electrochemistry topic on the effect of concentration on cell potentials. We're here to try and understand how concentration of different reactants within um, a half cell is going to affect standard electro potentials and hence the overall cell potential. So normally these standard electro potentials are measured with particular concentrations. If you're interested you can watch a subsequent video for that, please click the link now. Um, but this is about how when we use non-standard concentrations, uh, the cell potential will change. So let's just remind ourselves of a, a zinc copper cell. Uh, we've got here a zinc electrode, which turns out to be the more negative of the two, and a copper electrode here. So, uh, and it turns out that the standard electro potential for the zinc is minus 0.76 volts and for copper it's plus 0.34 volts. When we work out the standard cell potential, we find it's a positive value, 1.10 volts. And now what we're gonna do is make a change. And rather than using the standard conditions here, so standard uh, concentration of copper two plus was one mole per decimeter cubed, we're now going to instead use a new concentration of copper 2 plus of 0 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed. So how is this going to affect the value of the cell potential? Well, the way to think about this is to think about this redox equilibrium. So it's clearly it's not going to have any effect on the zinc one, but it's going to affect this redox equilibrium. So if we think about carefully what's going to happen here, as we decrease the copper 2 plus concentration, then the equilibrium system is going to respond to try and minimize that decrease. In other words, it's going to shift to the left. The equilibrium shifts left to minimize the decrease. So in that case, what's the consequence of that? Well, it is that the number of electrons produced, the concentration of electrons that sit on this metal is going to increase. So imagine that there were a certain number of electrons sitting there anyway. Well, now there are going to be a few more. So what's that going to do? Well, that's made the copper more negative, and therefore this value here is going to become becomes less positive, more negative. Now, you can actually use an equation called the Nernst equation to actually predict for this specific situation exactly what's going to happen, and it turns out that actually the new... Um, electrode potential under these conditions is actually plus 0 0.31 volts. And so the new E cell in this case is going to be subtracting minus 0 0.76, just the same, plus 1.07 volts. And so because this value here, which was a positive value, uh, became smaller, then overall the cell potential is smaller. You can think about it as the potential difference between these is going down because this is negative, this becomes more negative, and so the difference between them will necessarily be smaller. Okay, I'm just going to let you now consider a slightly uh, different case. So in this case, remember the standard uh, concentration of zinc 2 plus that we should have had here was one mole per decimeter cubed. But now we're going to say the zinc 2 plus concentration has been raised to 2 moles per decimeter cubed. So what I'd like you to do is to pause the video and to see what effect will that have on the standard cell potential, or on the cell potential. Well, let's think about what that would be then. So the zinc 2 plus concentration has gone up. Now that will actually force the equilibrium to the right. Shifts to the right. 
And what that means is that electrons are going to be taken up. So if we imagine zinc electrode here, remember it was the negative electrode, then what's actually going to happen here is that a few of these electrons are actually going to react with the zinc, extra zinc 2 plus that's sitting around, and they're actually going to go. So I'll just represent that. These electrons here are going to disappear. And so the net result is that this electrode becomes less negative. So again, now the difference between positive and negative has become smaller because this is less negative than it once was. And so we would actually predict that in this case, because this has essentially gone down, that this value should actually become less positive. And in fact, using the Nernst equation, we can actually show that this should go down to 1.09 volts as a result of this change. Now, a final one for you to think about. What happens if we make the zinc electron say, electrode, say, twice as large uh, in this case here? So just pause the video and just think a little bit. What do you think will happen? Well, the answer is absolutely nothing. So this cell potential remains exactly the same at 1.10 volts. Now, why is that? Well, it's because if we think about this equilibrium here, when we have a solid involved, which is not a dissolved substance, essentially the concentration of solid is not affected by increasing the size of the piece of solid. And actually, during all this equilibration, uh, equilibration of this, the solid concentration is essentially constant. Um, it would also be the same if it were pure liquid involved, so the concentration of water, which is involved in some equilibria, is also essentially constant. And therefore, no matter how big the piece is, it doesn't actually make a difference. And it's the reason also why um, the concentration of solid never appears in equilibrium constant in expressions as well in that topic. Um, and it's essentially because if we just think about a small area around the solid here, if we make the electrode bigger, it's not actually meaning that there are more zinc atoms within this defined area. It just means that the zinc atoms and the surface, that the interface between the solution and the solid just becomes bigger. So changing the size of electrode, either by making it smaller or larger, should have no effect on the cell potential.